The world is currently monitoring the latest in the U.S. elections. Let's further discuss this, of course, with our resident political analyst, Richard Hidearian. Joining us here, live on Yes, video. Good, good morning. I Richard, think. thank yeah. you. Huh? Oh, oh. Yeah, the puffy eyes tell you that I've been awake <laughs> through the night as much as I can. Yeah, but I've, seen, I've seen most of your, uh, your uh, posts no, on social yeah. media about the election, and most of what you said is holding true. But I'd like you to take a look at the map. And you were yeah. telling me something, Kanina, very interesting about possible flips. Ano effect ng flips? Yeah, I mean... Oh, let's start with the assumption na yeah. Harris takes Iowa, Nebraska, Trump takes New Mexico and Virginia. Ano ang effect ng Pennsylvania? Well, first of all, uh, the major battlegrounds we're gonna watch in the first wave, because it, it comes in waves, because yeah. different states have different rules. Yung iba mar, more mail-in ballots, mm -hmm. it takes That's longer right. time. So the ones that we're gonna hear a bit later on are Arizona or Nevada, right? Yeah. The Sun Belts one. Even California, which almost certainly will go to, to their home oh, girl, yeah. uh, that's going to come later on. So it's, it's very possible for quite some time in popular vote. Also, Trump is going to look very strong. As of now, if you look at it, Georgia and North Carolina are always the first major battleground states. We're going to look at it. And as per the latest numbers, they're leaning increasingly heavily towards Trump. Mm -hmm. you know? So that he also, you know, I think, already won Ohio. So it goes to Pennsylvania. I think um, now yeah. there's a lot of pressure. If if if, if Kamala is going to lose North Carolina and Georgia, she really has to do very well, mm -hmm. including winning Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. So if Trump secures those two and then wins Pennsylvania, I'm I'm having a hard time seeing, um, you know, a, 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 a straightforward path for for Kamala Harris, even if she's going to pick up Arizona or Nevada later on. Nevertheless, you may also see some uh, least Cheney effect. Mm -hmm. I think this was something that was a big debate among uh, Democrats yes. because the idea was. Uh, I mean, the Cheneys are known as neoconservatives. Correct. Their, their legacy is the Iraq War. So by bringing them into the fold, the democratic fold, that turned off a lot of progressives mm -hmm. and uh, left-leaning people. Not to mention uh, also strengthened the argument of Trump that I am actually the candidate of peace. Yes. I don't want war. I, uh -huh. I don't want military interventions. So the um, question Dito is what was the net effect? Did the Liz Cheney gambit... Uh -oh. uh, yeah. Uh, you know, give you enough benefit to potentially uh, overcome some of the losses she's going to sustain or she may have already sustained mm -hmm. among progressives, independents, and those who are not very happy with the old Republican Party, all, all of that. So, but so far, Trump is looking very good. I mean, I and Ronald yeah. were bashed a lot for I the past gonna, two, three oh. months saying, yeah. oh, you know, what are you... What are you looking at? Is uh, my argument was of what America are you looking at? Because yeah. when, when you look at the numbers, she came into the race with barely one percent uh, uh, popular vote, uh, uh, you know, edge. Mm -hmm. Biden was like ten percent two weeks into the uh, two weeks before elections. Uh, Hillary Clinton was six points. So I think there were a lot of alarm bells here and there about Trump uh, be looking very good uh, in these elections, and he might win not only electoral college by a huge margin. He could also actually win you're right. A popular vote. Richard, he has. If you take a look, he he, he in the last two elections, even yeah. the one he won against Hillary, his yes. popular vote was uh, quite low. Mm -hmm. Yeah, three As million less. Yeah, three million less. But now he's three million above. Yes. Uh, Harris. Uh, and if you take a look at Georgia, which you were mentioning is very important. Uh, uh, in context it on Georgia, Richard. Look, uh, as of now. You have already two two point one million votes for Trump and one point mm -hmm. nine million yeah. uh, uh, votes with seventy seven percent. Now the magic number for the states is usually eighty to ninety percent when they call they it already. Do projection. So yeah. it looks like a projection will go if it holds Trump's way in Georgia, Minnesota, mm -hmm. and North Carolina. But Minnesota kakasimula lang eh. Mm -hmm. Pero as you said, yeah. Pennsylvania. I'm watching and Michigan. Pennsylvania. The Pennsylvania one. I mean, it's leaning with Trump, but it's still very, very, very competitive. I mean, Pennsylvania is important because you know you have a governor, very popular Democratic governor there, who was being considered for the vice uh, position under Kamala. Uh, so you would expect her to be quite competitive in Pennsylvania. But nevertheless, I think uh, you know Trump doing very well in Ohio, Indiana. Uh, some of the nearby areas. Let's see. I am also looking at Michigan because yes. you know um, mm -hmm. that's another area where by foreign policy yes. a big uh, big issue. I think Trump Maraming made Arab, uh, Arab Americans, American Muslim Americans. Yes. Some of the exit polls I look at are projecting at least thirty percent of Muslim Americans, not only Arab Americans, South Asians among others, also going for Trump. Trump actually has a son-in-law is Lebanese, mm. Tiffany's husband, and based on the numbers I saw from last month, there were hundred meetings with Muslim American communities. Uh, between the Trump campaign and them, uh, and 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 Trump also visited a, a Muslim majority city also not 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 long ago. Mm -hmm. So, 
we may also see some inter interesting flip there because usually the uh, the uh, Muslim American community does go heavily democratic, and and it's it's possible that Trump has also been able to carve out enough here. So the issue here is, has Trump held on to his strong points for the Republican base, MAGA base, and at the same time carved out enough yeah. from the other constituency, um, whether it's Gen Z voters, um, male African Americans, because the male African American vote was also very important, that's especially right, that's in, right. in Georgia, mm -hmm. because some of the numbers were looking at economic issues, um, uh, some of them also with the, because of the Gaza issue. And one thing I think people don't talk about as much as, you know, I've seen all of these memes about Kamala Harris. I think the reason why Kamala Harris, for some, is, is not, you know, look fully, uh, you know, expressive herself is because she has a prosecutor background, right? right? That's right, that's right. Um, and, and that prosecutor background actually doesn't do very well among some African-American yes. male community because, you know, the idea is that yes, know, the, yes. the carceral penitentiary system targets them. So sometimes I feel the reason why um, she's not coming off as assertive as she was in the Senate. I remember uh, during the Senate hearings in the U.S. I was there when Kevin, uh, when Kavana yeah. uh, was, was, she was very feisty back then. Is I think because she had to kind of not repress, but not fully express the prosecutor side because of the concern with the more Black Lives Matter constituencies and all of that. So it looks like even though she has not as much emphasized the prosecutor side, maybe she's still not doing as well among the African-Americans, particularly because of the African-American uh, male and Gen Z. Yeah. I think those are the areas. So many things that I and Ronald have been raising this but two months ago on immigration, on economy, yes. on some of the constituencies being lost. So far, it's still holding. But again, it's, you can say this is still too early to say, but so far looking very good for Trump. So you mentioned earlier nga uh, look it's looking good for Trump even if you compare it nga dun sa mga last or uh, previous elections yeah. niya 2016 2020 uh, mas okay yung numbers niya today what do you think kaya what, what are your thoughts kaya na dapat na ginawa ni uh, Kamala Harris and, uh, during the campaign Again I'm I'm going to be bashed again I mean I, it's not like kulang ako sa bashing again I'm not saying the race is over there's still a lot yes, to watch yes, yes. Pennsylvania is still competitive and who knows if if you know something happens there there's still Arizona Nevada well, I mean, if ever Trump uh, is going to continue this very strong momentum we see at least so far, mm -hmm. um, you know, there are many factors. I think, first of all, um, there's still this debate, did Biden pull out too early or too late? Mm -hmm. yes. The conventional wisdom is it's too late yes. because you yes. should have given her enough time to actually build momentum and organization right. and all. But there's a new theory or at least hypothesis among some democratic strategies that Sana Biden pulled out a little bit later, so the surprise element uh, would be there. Oh, because be remember, her surge was enough. very good in the first month or month and a half once she got into the race. And then it began to taper off. And then another factor I think people are not paying attention to, there were a few points that RFK Jr. Yes, yes. gave to Trump. Uh, if you remember, once RFK Jr. joined Trump, that's where things got really, really tight again. Yeah. So there's also this debate that perhaps um, there was more than enough time for the other side to adjust to the race. That it was not enough of uh, Duz Ex Machina or kind of 11th moment surprise. Yeah. So that's an interesting debate I'm hearing within that's the right, kind right. of democratic strategy. And then obviously the more important one is, I want to say, I don't want to say dissociation, but the improvement argument. Yes. Because the, the Biden issue was not just that he was not at, you know, at the summer of his youth, right? Yeah. The, the Biden issue was that on the economy, inflation yeah. was hurting a lot of people. Yeah. On That's immigration, right. there was a, My sense is Kamala could have been more as aggressive in terms of saying, you know, I am part of this administration, but I'll we be there. Improve. But if I'm president, it will be different. Yes. And I think... Because more of her branding was like, we will continue. It's, yeah, it's continuity almost oh. 100%, when it should be like continuity 60, 70%, but 30% different. That's right, that's right. right. So even on the issue of gas and foreign policy, for instance, it was not very clear how much of a, that's right. how much of a difference she's going to be. So, it was, so suddenly you have this weird situation whereby Donald Trump looks like the change candidate yes. when he was just the president in 2020, right? And very contentious four years in office. So I think they allowed Trump to carve out that change candidate game more than he should have 
because Kamala did not distance herself enough from Biden as much as she should have. So this is what I call the Maros problem, right? <laughs> I, I'm going to be hated again. <laughs> but this was our issue in 2016, yes, right? yes, yes. when again, a populist won back then Duterte. Is because I think with, with, with Maros, the issue was, okay, what is going to be your difference from Pinoy? No matter what are the uh, good points with the late president, because every election people are looking for yeah. improvement, especially when growth is not included. That's right. Ah. Uh, especially when you're seeing a lot of weaknesses here and there, especially when you're seeing so much uh, polarization. So I'm afraid a lot of issues we raised with, with the last debate that we broke down is mm -hmm. like, because I, I could see some of your guests from the U.S. were saying, what are this Ronald and Richard watching? <laughs> I said, yeah, we're watching the U.S. electorate and the swing voters and counties you have to, you have to turn. And I'm not sure that, that there was enough out there in that debate, the only debate yeah, Kamala yeah. had with Trump to, to, to make, make that swing effect. But then again, please, before you go in and talking me, I'm just saying, it's still too early. Yes, too. But nevertheless, Trump is doing quite strong. And even on the popular right. vote front, if ever Trump wins this, not only electoral college, but also popular vote. Remember, this will be the first time since 2004, two decades, that a Republican candidate has also won the popular Both vote, side. right? right. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the, the thing with Trump last time was he had three million less votes, yeah. right? Uh, and he lost both Electoral College and popular vote in 2020. So for him, I think it's not only about winning the Electoral College, but doing very well on the popular, popular vote, vote because he wants that mandate and momentum coming in, yeah. assuming, of course, Things hold as they are. A again, I think it's going down to the uh, to the war now in Pennsylvania, right. which uh, we're watching very closely. As, as, I, as yeah, as I, we yeah I, I'd like to touch up quickly Stay. quickly mm -hmm. on that, uh, Richard. You mentioned uh, all these issues that are pulling down uh, uh, Harris, but I'd like to ask: uh, in 2016, uh, running up to the election, Hillary had a very strong commanding lead over Trump, even on media perception and people perception that was being played out. Right. It was uh, Clinton all the way. And she in Trump pulled off a surprise. Now we see this trend happening now, and people are uh, saying it's because Trump has a strong ground game. Uh, what do you make of the? They're saying that he has a strong ground game right now in making sure mm. that less Democrats come out and more Republicans go out and vote instead. Interesting. I mean, by the way, as we speak now, Kamal is likely doing better in Pennsylvania. So that's why I'm saying it's, if she pulls off Pennsylvania, then that's going to be a long night, an interesting night, right? So at, as of the latest number, I'm saying she's now at 51% mm. uh, in Pennsylvania. So this will be really the important one. Now, the thing is, the long-term assumption in U.S. politics was, you know, in terms of turnout, that's where the Democrats are going to do. And in terms of minorities, yeah. they're going to do very good. Uh, and then, of course, in 2020, we saw a lot of mail-in uh, votes, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that created some sort of an illusion of Trump doing well, mm -hmm. and then the last minute. But those assumptions are not holding as much as before. Uh, Trump is doing very well among a lot of minorities, including Filipino Americans. Shout out Kilatitas in Nevada. That could be also, because <laughs> there are a lot of the Republicans, by the way. Right, right. Like, um, mm -hmm. Doing very well among Latinos, African American, male especially, so, uh, uh, Muslim Americans, as we said, up to 30% maybe go yeah. to him. Mm -mm. But the other one is turnout. The Trump turnout is pretty high. So I think the hope of the Kamala side is that um, there are enough uh, Nikki Haley, never Trump people there, which I, I met a lot of them in South mm -hmm. Carolina, Georgia, when I was there earlier this year. I don't know where they stand on things. And more importantly, Remember in 2016, what Pulse really got wrong was a lot of people who are Trump shy voters. Yes. didn't say it. The hope right now is that there are a lot of um, Kamala shy voters in Republican MAGA heavy communities. Mm. In fact, on the way here in, in traffic, Lisa, yeah. very bad traffic, I was <laughs> listening to uh, uh, former Republican women uh -huh. who uh, want to vote for Kamala, but they were scared to say it openly because of the stigma mm. and all. But, oh, Hold that thought, another... Muna Richard. Yeah, we, have a, we have a report before you get bashed more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll talk about that trouble. more later.